What does it mean to be a maker? To hold an intelligence so delicately in our fingertips, an innate knowing that connects us to the ancestors who walked this land before us, and those who are yet to come. This urge that spurs minds and hands into motion, the delightful itch to create. Perhaps it's an understanding that our footprints won't hold forever in the sand, but that our life will be etched into the heartwood of the grandest family tree. To be a maker is to understand that life is in the process, to see the joy of life in a spider spinning her web. To be a maker is to be the ever-moving ocean as she decorates the shore with her tapestry of adornments. It's the hair making patterns through the long summer grasses. It's the humble blackbird weaving her nest with an intricacy and beauty that cannot be replicated. To be a maker is to understand that we are all woven into stories. To remember that we are not grander than the smallest ant. To remember that we are all connected in this never-ending cycle. Hello and welcome back to the Ancestral Craft Podcast. My name is Alexandra and I am a crafter, tinkerer, gardener here in Edinburgh, Scotland. If you're new here, it is so lovely to have you. Thank you for joining and being a part of this little community that we have created here on the internet. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for continuing to show your support. It is incredibly humbling and wonderful to meet so many of you. It is the autumn equinox uh, today, so I am feeling very inspired, very cosy and creative. And yeah, I had to record this a couple times at the beginning because the postman came <laughs> and delivered a lovely woolly package. So that is fantastic because it means I can share this with you. So thank you to Postman for being on time. And yeah, lots has happened. Uh, it, well, it's complete new season and things have been happening. We had the Ancestral Craft Retreat in August, which is about a month ago now, which was incredible. And I'll share that with you in a moment. But I just wanted to drop in and... Uh, let you know what's been going on. Uh, it was the Perth Festival of Yarn a couple of weeks ago. I think it was last two weekends ago. Yeah, two weekends ago. And that was incredible. I got to meet some of you and I got to catch up with old friends, catch up with new faces. And yeah, there's a lot to talk about in this episode. There's been some yarn events like the Ancestral Craft Retreat, like I mentioned, the yarn festivals. So I do have some acquisitions to share with you that really uh, make me feel very joyous. And I also have lots of stories and thank yous to thank. <laughs> so I will start in a moment. I am drinking some linden tea with a little bit of rose hip syrup which is really great because uh it's very nourishing for the heart and i need a little bit of that today because i feel like my mind's running a thousand miles a minute and it would be great to be calm and make sense to you all so thank you to the lovely herbal teas so yeah, uh, I've got lots to share, like I say, I've got some spinning, I've got some knitting, I've got some dyeing, some acquisitions, some foraging, some, um, you'll see my little, well, a fraction of my little pantry from foraging this autumn. It's, it's always a busy time of year, um, so we will get started. Uh, <laughs> I want to start with talking about the Ancestral Craft Retreat. 
It was incredibly magical. And if you want to hear about it from someone who's not biased like I am, uh, check out Ante from the Willow and Wool podcast. She is an incredible maker and an incredible human who I got to meet and spend that beautiful weekend with. Um, and she talks about it in her most recent episode. So if you want to hear about it from someone who came, that's where you can go. But if you want to hear about it from my incredibly biased opinion, then stick around. Um, yeah, it was an incredible weekend. We arrived on the Friday and we were starting with preparing fleece. And I was told that Lilia, who's the wonderful um, lady who was doing these retreats with me, who is an incredible healer and breath work, um, coach and nutritionist and she's everything she's so much and she had told me that she had acquired some Hebridean fleeces that we could use and I got there and there was a trailer full and when I tell you that this was the biggest fleece I've ever seen in my life I'm not kidding it took up a whole like catering table um, it was insane um, so on the Friday we I taught people how to wash fleece, prepare it by skirting it and yeah the proper scouring techniques and we also went through some of the different wool types and the wool groups, the sheep groups if you will and yeah talked about why spinning is an incredible way of learning about wool. Uh, yeah so that was the Friday and then we had a lovely cozy dinner uh, there was Carol, who is an incredible woman. I'd like to thank everybody who came. So Carol, absolute. She was so enthusiastic and that really made the whole experience for everybody just contagious, which everyone just wanted to learn. And as a teacher that you, you can't, um, predict if you'll get people who are really eager to learn. And Carol was always asking questions, which was incredible. You were all magnificent note takers. And yeah, I can't even describe how wonderful the group was. But Carol, thank you for coming. Ante, thank you for coming because you are an incredible human. And I have something that Ante made for me that I'd like to share with you all. Um, but it was my first time meeting you and it did not disappoint. I felt like I knew you for a very long time. And yeah, the fact you traveled all the way from Belgium for this little thing I'd been wanting to host was incredibly touching. And then Rahima, who I feel like I've met a soul friend for life. Rahima has the most gentle, graceful energy and is so compassionate and so still. She's like, she's both like this rushing river of passion and curiosity, but also just as still as the quietest of lakes and on like a morning. It's, she's, she possesses so much within her that is very, um, how would I describe it? It's very awe-inspiring to watch her be. And then the lovely Melinda and, of course, your family. Melinda is the dyer behind Zakami Yarns and she brought her wonderful little daughter, Esther, and her really, really lovely and kind husband, Gerge. So thank you for coming, everybody. Um, is incredible. Um, on the Saturday, we did lots of dyeing. Um, I think it was a whole day of dyeing. We even went out and got some wild plants. We tried some meadow sweet and the color was incredible. It was a bright yellow. And um, yeah, we just crafted in the evenings and we had incredible food grown on the farm by Lilia and the beautiful um, gardeners that volunteer their time there. And yeah, on the Saturday, it was the eve of my birthday and we everybody helped me stay awake we all knit in the little cottage we were in and yeah you helped me stay awake because there was a meteor shower and I really wanted to see um 
one of the shooting stars or meteors or whatever you want to classify it as. But I really wanted to see one, but because it was the summer, it was getting dark late. So everybody stayed up with me and we went outside and there was this most incredible shooting star and it was incredible. And I, I just left that weekend feeling so blessed to have met every single person and to really it highlighted what craft is about craft is so much more than making things it's the conversations you have it's the rhythm you all get going and the flow state you enter and the kindness and the compassion and it's it encompasses so much more as you might have heard from my little introduction um so yeah that's the retreat and I don't want to say too much because it feels hard to even describe to be honest it was just so incredible so I'm gonna put in some footage that you can all watch from the retreat and I hope that gives you just a little taste of what it was like and I will be hosting the retreat next year as well so if you watch it and you're feeling intrigued then stay tuned for the next couple of podcasts because I'll probably be releasing the dates before Christmas to give everyone plenty of time to arrange things. So yeah I hope you enjoy this footage. We'll talk about Perth after I think um, but first I would like to talk about some finished objects and some big projects that have been completed. The main one is the Vor shawl by Nina Pomerenke. I spoke about this shawl 
um, when did I speak? I did speak about this last episode and I shared with you that I had one skein finished of my Bore spin. So I was spinning um, some Bore fibre and it was my first fleece that I had purchased and processed myself. And I was in the process of spinning that and I managed to finish all of the wool I needed before the retreat. And when I was at the retreat, I took the wool along and I didn't dye it there, but we were experimenting with some colors and this was one of the colors we got. And this was the Meadow Sweet. And then also this was the Weld and the Iron. And I loved these two colors. They were so beautiful. And this is just on some woolly knit um, fiber that we were dyeing with. And these were the only two skeins left because we dyed a lot of wool as you would have seen and I put bundles together of each of the colors and everyone got to take them home. Um, but these were two extras so I took these ones and I came home and I brought some Meadow Sweet with me to try replicate this colour because I thought that might be the colour I wanted my shawl and I used my Bore a knitted sample so this was my gauge swatch for the, the shawl and I dyed it with the Meadow Sweet and then I put it in some iron and you can see that it's not quite the same colour and I do actually really like this colour um, but at the time for some reason I didn't I don't know if it was because the lighting was different but I decided that that's not um, the colour I was going to dye my wool so these were my little experiments and I decided that I was going to go with Weld to dye the yarn with and that I was going to do the iron bath to get it um, like a pistachio green. And yeah, I finished the whole project is what I should say. I have, I spun all the wool since last time, I dyed all the wool since last time and I've knit the whole project because once I started it was like I needed to give birth to this project like I needed to see it from the beginning to the end it was like it was the ultimate feeling of creation the fact that I had imagined this shawl and spun this shawl from a fleece and then t took it from start to finish which has always been a dream of mine so yes I will show you this is the main thing I want to show you because this took a lot of time and I'll try my best to show you. So this is the Vaucheau by Nina Fouquet. It's a large crescent shawl, so it's hard to show you in one um, shot. But oh, but it's really incredible. It's a simple garter stitch shawl and you just do um, yarn overs every beginning and end of row to have like an eyelet increase at the top and then you have some repeats where you do these little catkin is what she calls them, she calls them catkins because that's what this shawl is inspired by, spring, the catkins is and everything that comes out. So it's got these little bobbles almost that run along the shawl. And then you do some short rows at the tip and you start working the border along the edge. So this is all on your cable and then you do your little cast on this amount. I don't know how to describe that. And then you work your rows, so you cast on your stitches and then you work the rows and as you work the rows horizontally 
at the end of the row you end you knit two together through the back loop to cast off this edge and you work along i don't know if that makes sense but it's really quite a clever pattern but it's so simple and i'm not going to put this on for long because i'm quite warm because i have wool on already but i like to wear it just over my shoulders like this or you know i'll wrap it like a scarf um my favorite way of wearing it is I cross it over my chest like that and then I tie it at the back and I'll insert a picture of me wearing it like that. Um, and I can also wear it at the front as well. So I can wear it like that and then wrap it around me like this. So yeah, there's lots of different ways to wear this. Um, but I love this shawl. It is quite rough. I don't think it's rough, but I've been told it's not the softest by other people who are sensitive. But that's just the nature of Borore wool. Borore is a multi-coated primitive sheep breed, so it has long guard hairs that wick away the rain, and then it has its softer coat, but I processed it so that there was both in the one, so all the fibers are together. And what that's done is because the different coats have different textures, they take up the dye slightly differently. So there is a slight heathering that happens in the dye, which I quite like. So yeah, I hope that shows up all right on camera. I have some footage of me showing the shawl and wearing it as well when I went to forage some sea buckthorn. So I will insert that for you to look at. But yeah, that is my uh, my pride and joy of this episode, <laughs> my vor shawl. And yeah, I'm very happy with this. Okay, so I guess the second thing that I've been working on is the Versal by Albiona McLaughlin, and I haven't got far on this. Um, I don't think I'd cast this on yet um, in the last podcast. I don't quite remember, but this is the Versal. I've split through the sleeves and I've been working on the body. I have about, I'd say about eight inches or seven inches, something like that. And I've been just working on this sporadically. I don't have the needles attached because I'm using the size for a different project. Um, but yeah, it's a very simple construction so far. It's got a really nice shoulder detailing and I don't know the name. I think it's like a saddle shoulder, someone was telling me. But yeah, this is in um, Hofda um by Nutiden and I've had this yarn for a while now and yeah I'm excited to have it done I've still got a long way to go I'm knitting the size three um, and this is knit on 4.5 millimeter needles and yeah the size three is going to be too big the size one is my um size to fit but I want an oversized jumper um, because that's what I like to wear in the winter because I like to have lots of layers underneath because I get quite cold. So yeah, this is the size three, 4.5 millimeters in Nutiden. And I've done a provisional cast on for the neck because I, there's a few different options in the pattern for the neckline and I haven't decided um, which one I would like to use. So I'm going to do that last. I'm going to knit the whole thing then choose the neck at the end. It just gives me some flexibility in case I change my mind and it's easier to do that way. So yes, not much to share on this other than it started. And yeah, it's a really simple knit, but I've been working on the shawl and also my Caldwell um, waistcoat for Philip, so I haven't had a chance to do much more on this, but as soon as that's cast off, this will be my main project again, because um, that's how I like to work.
And a quick little thing about using Nutiden that um, people ask me about. Uh, I always, well, usually if it's double strands, this is when I'll do it, but I always pre wind up my yarn with the two strands into balls just because sometimes I find that the on the plates it can get caught as it's pulling from the outsides and this just really helps because it it just comes away from the ball really easy and it doesn't break very frequently at all so that's what I do I find that easier and it's easier to transport. I can put this in a project bag and I don't have to carry around two big plates. So yeah, that's The Versal by Albiona McLaughlin. Um, another work in progress. As you can tell, I've been focusing on the shawl and I've been done bits and pieces of other things as well. Um, but this is one of the main ones that I've been working on in the past few weeks. And you'll remember from last week, not last week, last episode, that I said I was working, I had finished the panel for the Caldwell waistcoat and I just had to do the pocket on the first panel. Since then, I have done the pocket on the first panel, which you'll see there. I've knit the back piece, so this is reverse stockinette, so that's the actual outside with the gar- not the garter, the, the pearl side on it. And what else have I done? Oh yeah, obviously I then- well I didn't do this first, I then knit the other panel and I finished that last night. Um, so that's blocking and it's still wet. So I'm not going to show you that because it took me ages to block that out to the schematics. So that will have to wait. But while that was blocking, I decided that I would seam up the side seam. It needs to be blocked so it's puckering a little bit, but it's just a mattress stitch on the side seam. And then I seamed the shoulder. And then I also picked up the armhole around the arm and knit the ribbing with the eye cord bind off. So it's a really lovely finish. I really quite like it. Um, so yeah, all that I've got left to do now is I've got to seam the next piece onto this side, do the armhole um, facings, and then I've got to knit the button band. So I have to pick up all along this and then I have to put these live stitches back on and then go down the other side. And yeah, that would be it done. Um, so that's really exciting. I am really excited to have this done. It's really nice to gift knit things for people when they're seeing it um, be made. And it's been really motivating seeing Philip's excitement to wear this. And every time he sees it, it looks more like a waistcoat. And I think um, that's really motivated me to get this done. And now that I'm doing all these little details and seaming things up, it's so engaging. And yeah, it's going to go quite fast now, I think. This will be my main thing until it's done because I'm so close now. It's so close to being done. Um, yeah, so that is the Caldwell vest. This is knit on 4.5 millimeters for um, the main body and then the ribbing's done in four millimeters. So this is the needles I'm sharing with the Versal. But yeah, I'm super happy with this. It's gonna be really cozy. <laughs> it's quite big on me, but... And then obviously it'll sit further over because I've still got the button band to add. But yeah, I'll be buying some toggles. I'll probably buy 
the Lilliput white toggles, the driftwood ones, because that's what he likes. He liked those on my Cume cardigan, so that's what I'll add for these. So yeah, and that'll be done. And this is my first time knitting a waistcoat with all these beautiful cables and yeah. If you want more information on the wool, um, the old Centrum wool, then please uh, look at my previous episodes. The one thing I will say that I've noticed about this wool, which is, like I say, the old Centrum worsted weight, is there's a lot of like broken strands and knots in some of the skeins. I don't know if that's just me being unlucky. But I did notice there were a few knotted joins in the other old centrum wool I used when I knit the Afton saw. So I'm not sure if that's a common thing. It's been common for me. I'll put some pictures in of what I mean. But all I've been doing to fix it is I've been spit splicing the ends and joining them together because it's such a woolly yarn. The join is really smooth and you can't really tell. It's just a bit annoying that you have to do it quite often. So maybe that's something to consider if if you're going to be using this wool. I don't mind because it's such a cheap wool and it's really got a lovely finish to it. But if that's not what you want to spend your money on, then just to let you know. So that is the Caldwell. That is all of my... Um, finished objects and works and progresses. Oh wait, no, there's one more. I wasn't sure whether to show this because I haven't actually done much, but this is the little tray that I showed you last time. And I've done a little bit more on my Macher cushion. So I'm using the Berlin Yarn Company. Ugh, I, st I love this yarn. If anyone's considering using it, um, I would really recommend it. It's so lovely. And this is Cheviot wool. And yeah, last time I'd done maybe two rows or something really sad like that. I've done a few more. So we have got some patterns going here now. It's still incredibly difficult to show. I'll try to get a close up and put it in. But uh, yeah, there's some really lovely, lovely details um, that are starting to happen. And yeah, the texture's lovely, the colour of the yarn is lovely. I just really adore it. And yeah, it will be a cushion eventually. Eventually it will be. Not right now. I tend to just do a couple rows when I feel like it. It's quite an intense chart, so I have to have the chart in front of me and I just do a few rows if and when I have time. But it does go quite fast. If I was to sit and really just do this, it wouldn't take me long. The, the actual construction is incredibly easy. Um, it's just remembering the pattern. Um, yeah, I love it though. I really would recommend knitting this. Okay. So I'm gonna take a sit first. I always forget how tiring this is. The next thing that I want to share with you is something I've swatched for. I haven't started it yet. But at the retreat, the lovely Melinda brought me a birthday present. And I have four skeins in total of this Zakami Yarns Siri Alpaca Fluff. And I don't even know if this will come up well. I'll try to get a video that I think showcases it. But it's incredibly beautiful. I have never um, treated myself to something this luxurious. This is um, the colorway Oatmeal and it's a lace weight yarn. And I really wanted to knit the soiree I have for a long time by Emily Foden. 
So I figured as soon as I saw this, I knew what I wanted it to be. So when I was at um, Perth Festival of Yarn, I was looking around for a yarn to pair it with. And I'm not really used to um, knowing what colors go well with um, mohair and alpaca fluff because I wasn't sure how similar the colors had to be for them to work. But I made a leap of faith and I got this wool from Sue at Hawkshaw Sheet, which you'll probably be sick of me talking about by now, but I love her wool. It's one of my favorites. This is her clotted cream base and it's, I think, Cheviot and Alpaca. And it's, it's nice and woolly from the Cheviot, but the Alpaca gives it a nice halo. And I thought these could go well together. So that's the skeined up fluff. And this is the Hawkshaw sheet. So these were the two I was going to put together. And this is just in my little bag that I also got from Melinda at Pro Festival of Yarn. This was made by her friend, um, Rita. And they sell these, and Rita sews them from old vintage cloths that she finds from people in her village. And yeah, I think the little tag says, this bag contains a military sheet, a rustic cotton tablecloth, and a curtain. So I really loved that. And I really, as soon as I saw this, I thought it would be a great little project bag to have sock projects and smaller things in because I only have one other project bag that I use so I allowed myself so I did some swatches with these two together and I can't even tell you how much joy this brings me this was my first swatch so I just held my intended yarns together at the recommended needle size and oh, look at that fluff look at it and there's such there's a delicate variation in the fluff that just adds a little bit of depth and I, I think you can see how that transforms the color of the base wool it just kind of gives it like this it's almost like an apricotty um violet variation i will get a little video to show you but unfortunately i didn't get gauge with that and that was on the 4.5 millimeters and i'm really glad i didn't get gauge with that because i don't have more than one pair as we've talked about so i went down to a four and this got me gauge and yeah the fabric is equally as beautiful um, so yeah, these are my little samples for the soiree and I will cast this on as soon as possible, but I need to buy more of this because I wasn't sure if this would work with this one. So I just bought the one skein from Sue and then decided that I would buy more if it worked and it works. So now I'm going to buy more, but, uh, I'm really excited for this project because I've never knit anything in like a cream color before. And I really like that. I think in the snow, this colorway is gonna look really lovely. So yeah, I'm really excited to cast that on. I've just got so much inspiration and so many things I wanna knit and spin and all of the things that I need to like pace myself and just focus on one thing at a time. But yeah, okay, that is the knitting segment done, actually. So I guess I will talk a little bit about some spinning. I have finished one little bundle. So as part of the Ancestral Craft Retreat, I bought some a fiber sample pack. So I bought raw wool from a farmer and they sent me so much stuff. Um, they sent me, I think about 30 different sample bags. Um, I will show you 
some examples. Apologies for the rustling. So they sent me some alpaca. Um, some blue textile, which is really nice. This is some North Ronaldsy. It's very mucky, um, but I wanted to share that I got that one because North Ronaldsy are the only sheep that only eat seaweed, and I think that's pretty cool. And the story about how that occurred is very amusing, and it involves a big wall. So I'd look into that if you're interested. And then I have some Romney as well. And... Yeah, I have a couple of those bags left because I gave most of them away to people who came to the retreat so they could try washing and processing. But I kept a few and I also kept the Polworth um, bag. And Polworth is so squishy and so soft. It's, it's the softest thing I've ever felt in my whole life, I think. Um, so I did a little skein. Again, I'll put in some footage. But this is from um, 50 grams of Polworth that was sent as raw fleece. I washed it um, as I usually would and it got so white just from washing it. It was so dirty. I have some footage of me putting it in the sink, I think. Um, so yeah, I did a little sample and the way I prepared this was I used my cones, my new cones, which I will show you in a moment, um, to, to prepare this worsted. And I spun it worsted with a backwards draw, so a short backwards draw, so you pull the fibre supply back as opposed to pinching and pulling forward, like a short forward draw. And this is part of my endeavor to really focus on my spinning and my technique and to get really consistent yarns and to be able to think about the yarn I want to create and accurately portray that um, instead of just winging it. And yeah, this was my little sample card. So I've been trying to note down my twists per inch and how much I treadle so that I can keep it consistent the whole time. So I have a two ply, a three ply, and then my singles. And what I mean by treadling is I'm trying to monitor from, from the orifice to my full length, which is usually my right hip, to go from there to there, how many times am I press pushing the treadle? So how many times is the wheel rotating? And keeping an eye on that. And that means I'm not watching anything. I'm not listening to podcasts, watching podcasts, listening to music, anything. I'm focusing on the rhythm of the treadling. And that's been incredible. I've so enjoyed that because it means I can really connect with my wheel, with the fiber, and it it really pays off because this is probably the most proud I've been of a skein of wool in my whole life. I don't know what I'll make with this yet, but I really do like it. And I've never worked with Polworth, so it was such a shock to me how soft this was. And I think it's... Um, its parents are merino and one of the long wool blends. I don't know which one, maybe Leicester or Lincoln, I don't know. But it's a mix, so you can really feel that merino softness. Um, and it's a treat because I always spin, um, well, I always prepare woolen because that's all I had. I only had some carders. So yeah, that is my spinning project. I'm also working on, this is my last little nest that I have, and this is, oh, falling away. This is Bouchant, which is a French sheep, 
And this is from Sue at Hawkshaw Sheet. This is the fleece that I'm sitting on. And I prepared this woolen. I tried preparing it with my combs, but I didn't realize that it was a double coated breed as well. So the, the, because I only had a little bit and I didn't want to separate the two because I barely have anything. So I was like, okay, it's meant to be woolen. And it really is because it works beautifully as a woolen. But I've just been spinning this on my Jalagon spindle. And I've really been loving spinning on my Jalagon. And part of my plan is I want to weave myself a bag, like a shoulder bag with some rushes and some crocosmia and some daylily. And I want to have like a little pouch where I can put my wool in. And then I want like a little holder on the outside that I can slot my spindle in. I've seen these before, but I want to make one. I don't want to buy one because that's just the curse of wanting to craft everything yourself. So yeah, they're my two spinning projects. The only things I'm working on right now, I'm trying to be really intentional. I'm either doing my breed studies from my samples that I have of specific wools, or I am spinning for something specific. Um, and yeah, I don't have anything that I'm spinning specifically for at the minute. So I don't want to use my fiber yet because if I'm working with it, I don't want to like spin a four ply and then go, ah, oh, damn, I really wanted a sport weight or a DK weight for this project that would look beautiful in this color and this fiber. So I'm trying to be intentional, but that does mean that I'm not um, working on anything specific right now. I only have a little bit to talk about in terms of other crafts, but I've been making little lavender wands. I don't know how well that's showing up. And I've been making these by uh, weaving it with crocosmia leaves. And I have a tutorial on how I do this on Patreon if you're interested. And yeah. I've just been making lots of these and giving them as gifts because they're such great little gifts to give because because they smell amazing <laughs> and they're really fun and quick to make. I think making one of these takes me about 15 minutes so you can really get through quite a lot I think. Uh, yeah and then I've also been doing some salve making. I have a little clip of some of the salves I've made. I've been making calendula and lavender um, uh, salves and they've been really great and I've been giving those as gifts too because we makers use our hands a lot and I wanted to craft a salve that was really nourishing and helped with calluses and dry skin and all of those things and I gave them to some people that I thought really deserved them at the Perth Yarn Festival. So yeah, uh, and I've also been doing lots of foraging. I have made lots of things. I'll put some footage in of foraging things I've been doing. And yeah, basically I have been making jams. I've got um, some Gelder Rose jam here, and this is with apple and orange. So. Gelder Rose, Viburnum Opulus, we have quite a lot of it at a garden I work at, so I've been harvesting that. And I've got some elderberry balsamic vinegar, um, elderberry syrups, sea buckthorn syrup, some rosehip syrup, um, some pickled nasturtiums. So this is one of my favourites at the minute. And uh, yeah, they're, they're super good. So I like to pickle the seeds and they work as like capers. And uh, there's lots of recipes online if you want to make those. But yeah, I've been making lots of things, kind of getting my pantry stocks um, brought up so that I have lots of fresh herby goodness to share in the winter with people. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything for crafting.
The next thing I would like to talk about is quite a big thing, and that is a make along that I will be running. I have been thinking about this for a while, and I released this on my Patreon a couple of weeks ago. But I will be running the Feathered Friends make along, and this is from the autumn equinox now to um, Imbolc, which is the 2nd of February, roughly. I'll update uh, further along the line the exact date I'll be closing the make-along. But the concept behind this make-along is that we all choose a bird. So we're going to choose a bird that inspires us or a bird we want to learn more about, and we make something inspired by that bird. So that can be anything from using the colours in its plumage to maybe the colour of its beak or being inspired by its nest or if it has a call that's really interesting and repeats three times, perhaps you'll have three repeats of something in a pattern or maybe it's just the colour of the yarn or the texture of the yarn, whatever it doesn't have to make sense to me or anybody else. It's about you and your relationship to this bird. And I, I really wanted to do this because I'm so inspired by nature when I make things. With the colours I choose, the materials I use, the pattern I choose, usually they're very reminiscent of colours and things in nature. And I've been really inspired by birds recently. I've always had a connection to birds and they've been coming into my life quite strongly. And I wanted to share that love with you and to let you all have the opportunity to connect with your own bird. And this can be any bird from your region, from another region. It could be a humble little robin to a flamingo. It can be anything. And yeah, you have until in bulk, which is February, to submit something uh, that you've made. You can submit more than one object, but... Uh, please just submit that in the finished thread on Ravelry and not um, put multiple pictures of the same thing in separate posts. So you can either use the hashtag feathered friends make along, so feathered friends mal, um, and use that on Instagram, or you can use the Ravelry thread to um, post, there's two separate threads, so there is the one for the finished object and then there's the one for discussion. So you can converse with each other about your birds, share facts, your learning, colour choices, etc. But then when you use the finished thread, just one picture of one object. And yeah, this will be really lovely, I hope. I've decided to be inspired by the little wren. Uh, I was really struggling to decide and that's the Eurasian wren. Uh, but I was at work one time and, well, a lot of times. I share my porridge with a wren, essentially. There's a little wren that sits on the bench with me and eats little bits of porridge. And I was thinking so hard about birds I could choose with really colourful foliage or something a bit out of my comfort zone, but I decided that the wren was calling to me. So I'm probably going to knit the East Wind Jacket by Emily Foden with wren colours because the little, um, they're not dots, but the little detail, the texture detail on the East Wind Jacket really remind me of the speckling on the wren. And I want to really pay homage to it in that jacket in the winter time. So yeah, I haven't decided on colours or yarns yet, but that's my idea. I really can't wait to hear what you guys have decided on making. But there will be prizes given out throughout the make-along, so use the hashtag and the discussion thread to post pictures as you go, and I'll be drawing some winners from there. The lovely cat from Heather and Hops, she has donated some codes for some of her patterns. And Sue from Hawksaw Sheep, she has given too many shuz. Um, she has given a skein of her Darby Gritstone and Shetland wool. And she gifted this because she heard about the give along, the give along, the giveaway and the make along. And she has two bases that are named 
from birds. So this is curlew. So that's a lovely bird. And it does, it, that's the color. Um, so yeah, there'll be this, there'll be the codes. If you have anything you want to give, you can give that, um, give me a message and we can sort something. But the main prize at the end, I will go on the finish thread and I will be painting um, your bird that you have chosen. So if any of you don't know, I studied art before I started crafting and I like to paint uh, botanical illustrations and nature things. Um, and I'm really starting to get back into it. So I want to paint the bird that you're inspired by. So I will reach out to the person and it will be a commission uh, of their bird. And I hope that's a good prize. I think it is. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to see what everybody makes. And I hope everybody loves the idea as much as I do. So yes, I guess I will talk a bit about Perth Festival of Yarn now. I had an amazing day. It was so nice to meet some of you and to meet um, Heather and Brogan and to see Rebecca and Amy Palco. It was really just quite um, special to meet so many people in person and to catch up with some people. So I bought a little bit, um, not tons because like I say, I I just can't buy things if I don't know what I'm buying it for. I really need to feel like I'm finding the yarn for the exact thing I want to make. There are some exceptions because some things are just too beautiful. Um, so yeah, I will firstly thank Eva. Eva, who runs Perth Festival of Yarn, does an incredible job absolutely every single time. And you could just see her rushing around and keeping things running smoothly. And it's incredible to see someone so passionate about bringing people together. And it's incredible that we get to have this event in Scotland and to see so many Scottish makers and Scottish um, mills and shepherdesses and shepherds who come together and show their wool. So I will probably show some of the things that I got. And I guess I will start with my main purchase, which was a sweater quantity of this Caithness Yarns. Now Caithness Yarns is an incredible, incredible business. Graham, who I think I probably spoke to for about two hours in total, um, he has a little farm in Caithness and he has sheep for fleece and that's it. But the interesting thing about him is he's really inspired by regenerative agriculture, regenerative agriculture, and his sheep, he grazes them in a very intelligent way so that wildflowers and orchids and all of these beautiful things can thrive on his, on his fields. So he's not only looking after the sheep, but he really sees himself as a custodian of the land itself. So I have 600 grams of this wool and it's a castle milk moret, which is quite a rare sheep. And it's British brown alpaca. And yeah, I can't even describe to you how squishy and soft this is. It's It's got such a quality to it. I was really looking elsewhere to see if there was a cheaper wool that had this quality, but it didn't. So I, this was my big purchase. It's 22 pounds per 100 grams. So yeah, I've got enough of this to make the Madeline jacket by Sumin Kim. And I really love that jacket and I've wanted it for a while and I really wanted a warm, rich brown. And this is this is the one. This is the one I found. This is the one it's meant to be made from. And I'm really excited to work with this. So I have I have six of these, but I'll just so you can get a really good feel for this color. It's incredible. So 
So that was my main purchase. I also loved Shearing Crafts, I think she was called. Yeah. She's in Aberdeen and she has um she uh felt fleeces. So she has beautiful um pelts, but they're not um they're vegan, I guess you could say, because the the skin's not on them. But she was also selling fleeces as well. And I got a hundred grams of this incredible um Gotland fleece. And I can't wait to spin with this. I actually cannot wait. And because Gotland is quite a long wool, I'm going to comb this. And this was my little test nest, if you will. So I used my combs to make this little bundle to see how it would respond to combing. And it, it responds incredibly well. Um, like, it's I've made this beautiful nest that will be easy to draft from. So I've got a hundred grams of this and that was only five pounds. It was really reasonable and it's washed and ready to go. I thought this was, this made me really excited. Um, and I think there's only one other purchase <laughs> from one other store. And this is Trava and Wool, and this is the lovely Zuzana. And we talked for quite a while because she is such a creative soul. She has beautiful colors and she knits these beautiful um, toys for kids. And she has embroidery work and she was sitting there embroidering and knitting. And she had these lovely, I'll try show them up all at once these lovely plant dyes. So her stall is all plant dyed and she had these incredible colors. And the base is a merino single with silk, I think. Okay, 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk and 10% cashmere. And it's a very thin lace weight yarn. I don't know if I can even show you that. Um, but she had a sample of holding two of these together, so she'd hold a, a thread of each, and it made a nice fingering weight wool, and she had some socks and other things knit up in it, but I thought what I really wanted was to make some mitten liners, so I have a few mittens that are, they let a lot of air through, and I wanted to have something really soft and delicate that could go underneath that I don't have to worry about getting um, mucky. So I got enough to make two pairs and I wanted to make like a yellowy blue pair, a yellowy green pair, sorry, and maybe a blue pair because I really love this blue. I'm not really a blue person, but I never think I suit blue, um, but I got that because I couldn't help myself. So these are dyed with marigolds. I think both of these are marigolds. So this is marigold. This one is coreopsis. This one is also marigold. And then these two are indigo. So I'm not sure what I'll do with the others, but I think I'll work with them in the same project, I think. Um, I think they'd look nice marled together as well because that's the beautiful thing about plant dyed fibers. Everything goes beautifully together. And it was really nice to go away from a stall with lots of color. Um, and I was terrible at taking videos and documenting the festival. So you will have to <laughs> look at other podcasters content, um, cause I'm terrible. But I did take a little video of her stall because it was so beautiful. Um, so I'll insert that now. And I also got a little needle case. So she makes and embroiders these little needle cases from scraps of fabric. 
So they're not perfect, the fabric. There's some writing on them and she has like an old um, jumper that went wrong that she used for the inside. But I love this pattern that she embroidered. It's so lovely. And yeah, you just put your uh, sewing needles or your tapestry needles or whatever you're using in here into this fabric and then roll it up and yeah I thought it was so delicate and sweet and yeah there was lots to choose from but this is the one that I ended up feeling drawn to so yeah that was all of my purchases from the festival I think I did quite well I was quite restrained and yeah, it was nice to actually buy some wool because I haven't done that in a while and to be around so many lovely people who were so inspired by everything going on. Um, so I have a couple of acquisitions that are outside of the festival. So I got some fiber from Nellie and Eve and she's based in Wales and she is also a plant fiber artist. And they keep coming out of their little braids, but uh, bear with me. So I got two colorways. This is um, Summer Sky. And this one is uh, Alcamilla. And I love her colors. This is a bluey gray, but it's more gray, just a very hint of blue. I love this and I can't wait to spin something up. So I've got two braids of each, um, so two of the Summer Sky and then two of the Alcamilla. Um, and that's just because I've been so inspired by spinning recently. I just want to spin everything for projects and it's really hard to buy wool because I'm just so eager to spin everything but I don't have time to do that and I want to knit still so I'm gonna try balance it out a little bit and yeah I've been talking about them a lot but here they are these are my wool combs that I purchased um, about a month ago now just over a month ago and these are from Wingham Woolworks which is based in Rotherham in uh, South Yorkshire which is near where my mum lives. So I decided to get combs with a stand so that I could clamp it to the table and work um, with one hand free. And I got the double tines. They've still got some Gotland on them. I got the double tines. And this is for about medium to fine wool. So that's just because the teeth are further apart uh, than some others so they're not for fine fine wools but that's because I use mostly medium-ish wools so these are the most versatile for me and they're really great because I'm gonna try demonstrate but you slide the comb into here and then you have to put this little peg in to secure it and then you clamp this to your table and then you work with your combs like that. So this was an investment, <laughs> um, but it's so worth it. Um, I think we're so detached from what true quality costs. Um, and I didn't want to buy a pair that wouldn't do the job I needed them to do. So I decided to just get the pair that would last me a lifetime. And that is them. I also got a Diz, and this is by Time and Floyd on Etsy. And this is just when you're combing and you're pulling it off to make your um, top, you want to put it through one of these so you can get a nice, consistent, um, drafted top. And yeah, that's about all there is to that one. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was the thing that came in the post. Um, I'm incredibly excited by this. The box is falling apart a little bit. 
But this is um, the Autumn Equinox box by the Woven Briar. And the Woven Briar is a shepherd and a weaver and an incredible craftswoman. You can find her on Instagram and her website. But she has her own flock of sheep that she hand shears. Well, she has a shearer come in who uses blades as opposed to an electric shearer. And yeah, she looks after them incredibly well. And she decided to start these boxes. They're quarterly boxes that have spinning fleece from her flock. And this is wood, wool, and the wild. So I haven't had a good chance to look at this yet. And I'm going to try show you to the best of my abilities. But this is what arrived. And there's some information about how she looks after her sheep. And a little card about what's in the box. And the theme for this box is uh, natural white, inspired by the summer sky. So there's four different samples in here as well as a little herbal or nature-inspired gift that she makes. So this time she has given a tannin ink, which is a black ink made with acorns, walnuts, and alder cones from her farm. So I'll be using that for sure. And she also has given these four amounts of wool. So there is um, Portland wool, 100 grams, and this is incredible. It's got a little bit of organic matter in it, but that's what I love. I wish you could feel this, it's really quite soft, and but still got a lot of grippiness to it. It's got a nice crimp. And I love how all of the colours she's chosen are slightly different, even though they're both would be classed as natural white. This is Blade Shorn Jacob. That is incredible. <laughs> I think I have a favorite. It's got a slight gray tint to it with some black hempy hairs in there. There is also some Exmoor Horn. This one's really crimpy. Like, this is going to have a lot of elasticity. Mmm. This is beautiful. And then some blade shorn Portland again, but this is the raw shearling fleece. So I'm not going to open this because it will be very crinkly, but I can't wait to process that. And I love how there's an option to do both to process your own, but also to have this beautiful processed fleece. Can you see how beautiful those are? So yeah, that is the Woven Briar subscription box. And that's probably the only subscription box that I will ever buy because usually I just like to choose but because it's quarterly I, I feel okay with that so that I think is everything I just wanted to quickly show you this beautiful willow sculpture that Anta made me for the retreat I love this it symbolizes so much to me with the spiral and I keep it on my altar and yeah all the links for the make along and everything I'll put in the description and there will also be show notes on my website. If you would like to join me over on Patreon, then please find the link on my website also. And I really can't wait to catch up with you further on into autumn and to see how these woolly projects that I'm so inspired by have come to fruition and what new things I'll be making. And I can't wait to share all of this with you and to see what you're making. I can't wait to see what birds you choose and how you decide to interpret the make along. And please use the hashtag and get involved in the conversation. 
And yeah, I will catch up with you soon. Thank you for bearing with me for this long episode and sending so much love and enjoy autumn. Breathe in every last moment, witness every last leaf falling and remember that spring will come again and autumn is never an end. It's just a rest and remember to let yourself rest too. So until next time, goodbye and lots of love.